Hi, this is Eli Sommer again, and uh, today I would like to talk to you about a topic uh, that is of concern to many of you out there, and that is the treatment of maladaptive daydream. The reason that uh, um, some information about treatment is coming out so late is because it took us a lot of time to uh, study the phenomena, to establish its validity, to understand its mechanisms, its correlates, uh, what, what does it come with, what other issues uh, are associated with it. And um, after um, many numerous interactions with uh, uh, consumers, uh, with uh, people out there who are experiencing maladaptive daydreaming, we learned a lot about the experience and about what helps some people uh, deal with the experience. First of all, let me say that the trait itself associated with uh, maladaptive daydreaming uh, is in and of itself not psychopathological. We call the trait immersive daydreaming. It is the capacity to be fully absorbed in fantasy uh, in a way that creates a sense of presence. Um, unless this mental activity is associated with distress or dysfunction, it, it is just a trait. As I've indicated in previous uh, uh, videos, perhaps it should even be regarded as a some sort of a talent. Uh, what is also uh, important to um, uh, acknowledge that uh, this mental behavior is not just like normal daydreaming in the sense that not only is it extremely vivid, but the contents of the daydreaming are often uh, very elaborate, complex, fantastical in nature, um, and fanciful, uh, evolving stories. And uh, the uh, uh, phenomena is further characterized by physical movement. People who, many people who engage in this type of fantasy report uh, a need to uh, uh, sway back and forth, move about, pace, uh, twirl uh, an object, uh, in their, uh, in their hands. And others report that music is extremely important for them to set the mood and um, to uh, perhaps sometimes even trigger or, or um, maintain their intensive daydream. What is it? What is this phenomena? It is, uh, we believe, a dissociative phenomenon associated with absorption, mental absorption. Uh, this is the um, uh, complete concentration on one aspect of uh, human perception at the expense of other elements. Uh, absorption is actually a, some sort of a split in the consciousness and many people can run parallel, dual consciousness streams. Uh, the most obvious example is, uh, of course, driving from one destination to from one place to uh, to another and arriving uh, at your destination without having any memory of of uh, the the trip and the uh, major land, landmarks along the road because you were um, uh, preoccupied with some sort of a daydream still uh, driving uh, uh, would have been safe uh, involving complex negotiations with uh, traffic and, and, and traffic signs and, and uh, traffic, traffic rules. This is a prime example that, of course, many others of how we normally can split our consciousness. Um, but this split of consciousness can, as any mental phenomena, become abnormal. It starts with a, a normal phenomena among children who can daydream and become totally absorbed in the book, not only in their mind, in a film, in a cartoon, but also in play. And uh, we know that children uh, uh, can get so engrossed in their, um, in their uh, fantasy games that they can even 
invent and experience imaginary friends, imaginary companions that to them feel very real. Still, the children are absolutely normal, of course, and this very trait can linger on and stay in some adults and uh, provide them with an internal um, entertainment system built in, in, in their mind. The point is, of course, as you can imagine, those of you who have never experienced maladaptive daydreaming can imagine that this experience can be very rewarding. And because it is so rewarding, uh, uh, but by the way, why is it rewarding? Is because um, uh, our imagination uh, is, uh, has no limits and we can experience ourselves in different uh, circumstances, um, experience ourselves uh, hanging out with celebrities, uh, being a celebrity ourselves. Uh, we can imagine ourselves having traits we always wanted to have but never had or uh, be surrounded in relationships that we yearn for but uh, are missing in our current lives. So um, this is of course uh, extremely uh, comforting. Um, um, it, it, it would be uh, particularly rewarding of course if the real life circumstances are aversive, are, uh, are, are painful because of loneliness, because of uh, strife, interpersonal strife, because of uh, trauma and abuse, because of bad memories, because of um, psychological, emotional distress. The ability to switch into a different mode of consciousness, to split the consciousness and become unaware of external reality and external circumstances that are undesirable and move into a different world uh, that in which we are, we, which we are the directors of, uh, is of course doubly rewarding. So it is rewarding in and of itself. It is uh, uh, so much more rewarding when the uh, external reality is dismal or painful. So um, any rewarding experience, of course, has a tendency to increase in, uh, uh, in its occurrence. We are motivated to experience it again, so we do it more. Uh, this is how we train animals, of course, to do what they, what we want them to do. We reward them for what we believe is the correct behavior, and the frequency of that behavior therefore increases. Um, this type of rewarding uh, 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 creates, of course, a, 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 a this type of rewarding experience creates uh, can create a yearning, a craving a longing for that experience which is so pleasant and as you probably notice what i'm actually talking about is the uh, conditions ripe for the development of an addiction in this case a behavioral addiction what kind of behavior not gambling not sexual behavior but a mental behavior it is very rewarding what sort of a mental behavior? A dissociative behavior of splitting of the consciousness. So when immersive daydreaming, this is the normal trait, becomes excessive, it can cause distress and it can cause dysfunction because simply because it consumes time, because of the time wasted and the inability to concentrate on the advancement of real life goals. And distress and, be, and, uh, and dysfunction are of course the hallmarks of psychopathology. So this is when immersive daydreaming becomes uh, maladaptive daydreaming. Uh, we also know that uh, maladaptive daydreaming can be comorbid. It can come with other psychological problems. We don't know about the causality or the directionality. We only know that uh, it is um, uh, correlated with attention deficit disorder, the inattentive type, 
We know it is correlated with depression. We uh, know that it comes with, uh, in some cases, not in all, with, with social anxiety. We know it is associated with obsessive compulsive disorder. We know that there is a higher incidence of maladaptive daydreaming among people uh, with Asperger's. Um, this is the higher functioning um, individuals on the, on the uh, autism spectrum disorders. We know it can be associated with substance use. And we also know that um, we have a higher incidence of maladaptive daydreaming among survivors of childhood trauma. Again, all of these are not conditions, are not necessary for the development of maladaptive daydreaming because as I said, this is a fun mental activity that is easily accessible, of course, legal, uh, highly rewarding, and therefore can become addictive to, uh, to anyone uh, if one uh, uh, loses control over this mental behavior. It is also important to note that many people with maladaptive daydreaming are uh, quite uh, ashamed of their condition. Uh, they tell me they do not talk about it with, uh, with family members or with friends, uh, and many don't even mention it to their therapists because, to, as I'm being told, many therapists do not dismiss it, do not understand it, and therefore that uh, increases the sense of um, uh, frustration among sufferers. So they just drop it, they don't mention it anymore. So in short, um, many of you uh, write to me um, and contact me in, through social media asking me about treatment. And indeed, uh, it is about time that we generate some knowledge about um, effective uh, treatment approaches for maladaptive daydream. And indeed, we have recently, uh, we meaning uh, my doctoral student, Oren Hersku, uh, um, and I uh, recently completed a successful randomized controlled trial. Um, and in preparation for this and in analyzing the outcome of this trial, we know a bit more now about how to treat maladaptive daydream. First of all, uh, we concluded that motivational interviewing is important. What is motivational interviewing? It is a method of resolving um, a person's ambivalence uh, about recovering from an addiction. Why ambivalence? Because it is both rewarding and distressful. So people want to get rid of it, but of course crave for it at the same time. So uh, to allow individuals to embrace the treatment efforts and uh, uh, recovering from any addiction is a great uh, effort. And to best change their problematic uh, addictive behaviors, they must be highly motivated. Um, so uh, motivational interviewing is facilitated usually by the therapist and, um, and those interested in recovery uh, develop their own motivational statements and plans uh, in, 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 in reminding themselves why is it so important for them to recover, what do they stand to gain from recovery, and what do they stand to lose from um, abandoning the treatment protocol and uh, resorting to um, their uh, usual mental behavior? We also think uh, that, you know, again, borrowing from existing uh, treatment modalities for uh, addictive behaviors, that contingency management could be effective. What is contingency ma management? It is, uh, again, a, a um, behavioral treatment uh, applied to uh, several, uh, uh, applied successfully to several substance use disorders. Um, and it, it is used to encourage 
or to reinforce uh, sobriety or um, um, cessation of the addictive behavior by offering a, 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 an alternative rewarding experience, by rewarding the correct behavior, by rewarding a, a more adaptive behavior. Uh, so this method provides material rewards as motivation for desirable behaviors. Uh, but the rewards need not be completely uh, or only material. For example, people can be rewarded. I mean, this is, this is not um, the, the straight immersive daydreaming cannot be gotten rid of completely. It is not like uh, uh, waning somebody off uh, opium or a crystal meth. Here we're talking about a normal mental activity that is very intensified in some cases, that is luring towards excessive usage. So uh, the challenge here is not to get rid of it. It's impos impossible to get rid of daydreaming, but to have a better control over it. So daydreaming can be used as a reward for completing normal uh, uh, your, um, the um, regular responsibilities, meeting the regular obligations one has in, in real life. So one can allot uh, a half an hour, let's say, of, or an hour even of daydreaming, if that is what is uh, 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 wished for. Um, as as a, a reward for um, and a condition for having met uh, the uh, predetermined responsibilities. Um, so um, this is um, an, an important idea to keep in mind. It 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 uh, it can help uh, shape the right behavior. It can help. Um, uh, prevent a dropout and, and relapse. Let me also state that simple monitoring of this mental activity could in and of itself be helpful. Uh, we used in our clinical trial, we use monitoring in order to, to uh, gauge the changes in, in, in daydreaming and to evaluate and assess our intervention. But we noticed, and some people reported to us, that just by starting to monitor their own mental activity, they became more aware of it, more accountable. And this in and of itself helped them reduce their um, daydreaming time. So uh, monitoring can be done, of course, by keeping some kind of a journal and logging the time during the day, spent in daydreaming. Um, if you want to be meticulous about it, you could also indicate other circumstances that have led to the daydreaming, that have triggered it, um, and this can uh, become uh, important material for reflection or to bring uh, into therapy. But uh, monitoring is uh, often used uh, as a tool in cognitive behavior therapy. CBT. CBT can be applied uh, to, uh, and is applied in the treatment of, of, of many uh, uh, mental disorders. And it's important, again, to uh, uh, and, and relevant in helping individuals recognize and change their maladaptive behaviors. Um, so CBT can help people with uh, uh, acquiring alternative coping skills, identifying risky situations and what to do about them and preventing relapse. Um, for example, one of the things that I do with my patients, I help them identify situations and activities and behaviors that are incompatible with maladaptive daydreaming. Um, for example, uh, talking to somebody requires focusing the attention externally and this is incompatible with focusing attention internally by getting absorbed in your in, in, in fantasy life. So this approach is helpful because 
it can be paired with other techniques, with other forms of therapy that go after some of the deeper underlying issues that sometimes are present in the lives of individuals with maladaptive daydreaming. Uh, we also know that the skills learned through CBT uh, continue to, to, to be of benefit long after the initial therapy and, uh, and therefore uh, um, it, it's a cost-effective treatment because it's a skill learned and it's not dependent on the therapy hour. Our recent uh, clinical trial uh, focused primarily on mindfulness. And uh, we found, found mindfulness to be effective in improving control over excessive daydreaming in mal among maladaptive daydreamers. What is mindfulness? We are talking about a state in which one becomes more aware of one's physical um, um, uh, environment uh, about uh, the present moment, about one's emotional condition. And it's important to do so without becoming judgmental and getting carried away in all kind of self-talk that is critical, just observing. Individuals may be able to pay attention uh, to a variety of experiences such as their bodily sensations, their, their, their thoughts, their feelings, and the challenge is to accept them without being influenced by them. So mindfulness practices are believed to be able to help people better control their thoughts, their mental activities, rather than being controlled by them. We're talking about a basic human ability to be fully present, aware of where we are and, and, and aware of what we are doing. And it's about not becoming overly reactive or overwhelmed by what's going on around us or in our mind. So people can practice mindfulness uh, both by sitting down for a formal meditation practice but they can also uh, uh, become more intentional and focused and aware on the things that they do each day, throughout the day. Uh, Mindfulness-based uh, psychotherapy approaches are becoming quite popular and have been gaining increasing uh, research support. And uh, they're commonly delivered through the use of Mindfulness meditation, uh, you, you can search YouTube and find a lot of uh, free uh, lessons on how, how to uh, develop your mindfulness skill. And in these uh, meditation, uh, mindfulness meditation uh, practices, people, participants are trained to zone in on a particular phenomenon. Um, if the participants become aware that their thoughts are drifting away from the present, for example, into fantasy, into daydreaming, they are encouraged to take notice of where they are and, and, and what they are doing, uh, what were they thinking before their, uh, their attention uh, tended to drift away inwardly, and then uh, shift their attention back to the present moment without reacting or judging themselves. Uh, therapists, of course, uh, uh, can help those in treatment to better understand and address the emotions and the physical sensations associated with their cognitions. And these are uh, sometimes related to, the, uh, to underlying or associated issues and problems along the lines of the comorbid disorders that I have uh, uh, outlined earlier. For example, if one is very shy, socially anxious, uh, and painfully aware of one's loneliness, that can lead to a need to experience social success and self-confidence in fantasy. But this very awareness may also motivate one 
to reach out to someone or at least seek therapy that will increase or, or improve that very skill that is um, so missing and so absent and which the uh, person wants to compensate for in unrealistic fantasies, which paradoxically, of course, only increase the loneliness because they do nothing to um, uh, improve uh, the, the skill that requires uh, mastering the courage needed to start interacting with others and becoming the center of attention. But that's just an example of some of the underlying issues that must be uh, addressed. And mindfulness can often help the person identify what are the issues that are triggering them <coughs> into daydreaming. So what is important to remember that we are not um, encouraging people to uh, uh, sit, in, sit in, in, in a yoga position and meditate all day. Because mindfulness training is not all in your head, it should become a way of life. So many types of mindfulness meditations are practiced outside the clinic, um, uh, without meditation, formal meditation. Uh, because once the knowledge of mindfulness practices is developed, those um, who master the skill can integrate mindfulness into their daily lives uh, uh, in, in, in non-clinical environments, uh, such as during walking, paying attention to putting the weight on one foot after the other and the sensations in the muscles and, and the uh, impact of uh, the, the, the feet on, on the pavement and so on. So one can mindfully, mindfully walk, mindfully jog, mindfully eat, mindfully listen to music, although music is, as I said, a trigger to fantasy, uh, if we don't use it only as a soundtrack for our inner movie, but uh, try to figure out, uh, you know, what is it that we're hearing now, which instruments, how are they played, uh, trying to pay attention to the composition and to the harmonies. Uh, this is about focusing externally and becoming present rather than drifting away. And we can do, uh, we can involve mindfulness in almost everything that we do, including washing dishes or just when we are at our computer, just being aware and fully present at what our fingers do and how our, our body feels seated, seated uh, on the office chair and so on and so forth. Um, but again, mindfulness could be especially important during emotionally overwhelming experience um, and because this kind of practice can help people maintain their sense of control. In short, we now have evidence to be published soon that maladaptive daydreaming is treatable. Good news. Educate yourself, educate your doctor about maladaptive daydreaming and stay tuned for the, uh, for the outcome research that uh, it will take some time to publish because we are now just finishing the write-up of our data. If you want uh, to uh, get access to uh, further information about maladaptive daydreaming, simply type into Google International Maladaptive Daydreaming Research. If you type those exact words in Google, you will get the first hit will be our research website. But even if you miss one or two words, it will most probably appear on your first page of your Google search.